Hi, I'm Chuck with IWS Sales. You know, like every video, I'm really excited to get to share with you another one of these Renegade Classics that we've had designed. Today, this video, I'm gonna really put a lot more emphasis on the chassis. I've been kind of reading through the comments that a lot of you have been leaving, and a, a lot of people wanna know more about the brakes, the suspension. Another big topic is CDL requirements. So. I think I'll start this video out with addressing the CDL. So CDL stands for Commercial Driver's License. So the question is, do you need a CDL to drive this? Based on the research we've done, that answer is no, because this is not a commercial vehicle. However, there are some states that require a Class B, or some states require a motorhome endorsement if you're over say 40 foot in length, and that you would need to check with. But all in all, specifically to CDL, you don't need a CDL to operate this, and really there's no issues at all with driving these. Uh, they're very simple to drive, and if there is a Class B requirement, that's also very simple to get to. I'm not sure which states do that. I do believe California requires it, but that's about all I know at this point. Keep in mind, this is a 38 foot long coach, so we're really referring to something in this category right now. So this is a 2021 Renegade Classic that we call our signature series, and we've been really working on perfecting this, and I gotta tell you from the heart, um, currently I'm running a 42 foot tandem axle, uh, and the reason I'm running tandem axles is we're, uh, our intentions is to continue to pull a stacker trailer, but I can tell you right now from the heart, if I wasn't pulling a stacker and I didn't need uh, that extra tandem for the stacker, this is the exact motorhome I would personally own. As a matter of fact, next year we may not be running uh, the cars as hard, so we're probably gonna drop down to a single trailer and this is the exact uh, motorhome size that I would buy or I plan on buying for me and my family unless we decide to pull a bigger trailer. So this motorhome, I wanna start out with a price because everybody always asks me about the price. And the price on this one is 519,144. Now, Renegade requires us to use map pricing, which is a minimum advertised price. So that's the minimum price we can advertise. Can we do a little better? Absolutely. So uh, feel free to give us a call, talk to one of our sales staff, and you know we can really talk about, um, you know, where we can go fr from that number. But, you know, I always like the art of negotiation and, and we like to have fun with these things. So 2021 Renegade Classic, and it has a 2021 Freightliner um, Cascadia 113. And what makes this a 113 is that from the back of the cab to the center of the front bumper right here, that's 113 inches long. We also offer a Cascadia 126, and it would be, it has a 13 inch longer hood. Now the reason we can run a shorter hood on this is because we've chose the DD13 power plant, the Detroit 13 liter engine, and it makes 505 horsepower. It, it makes 1,850 foot pounds of torque. Now, the only reason we would go to a longer front end is in the 126 Cascadia, and that is if we wanted to put a bigger engine in, like the DD16, the 16 liter. We feel very strongly that this is the best chassis for this configuration. So keep in mind, by running this shorter hood, we're able to, in a sense, move the front axle back 13 inches. It also allows us, think about it this way. This motorhome is 38 feet long with the current living space on the back. If we went to a bigger chassis, we would be 39 foot long. Or to stay at 38 feet, we would have to give up one foot of living space. Hopefully this makes sense to you. On, on our website at IWS Sales, if you go to motorhome models, we have a really nice chassis comparison section that I think a lot of people don't know what's there. 
and you can select on all the different chassis and do the side-by-side -side comparisons. But we've had several customers. We have one customer who bought a motorhome from us about two years ago, and currently his company, they have over 7,000 trucks on the road today. That's 7,000, and he uh, is the owner, or was the owner of that company, and this is the exact chassis that he spec for himself because the performance of this 13 liter engine is right on par with the 16 liter. They both make 1,850 foot pounds of torque. You can option for a higher torque rating in the bigger engines, but the transmissions aren't designed for it. So to try to keep things, you know, right in their, in their lanes comparable, the 16 liter that we sell makes 1,850 foot pounds of torque and the 13 liter that we sell makes 1,850 50 pounds of torque. So they're both exactly on par there. I really like the shorter hood because it's easier to see out of, it's got more visibility and turning radius. This thing's just like driving a sports car. Okay, now I'm gonna move around to the front and we're gonna talk a little bit about this, more about the chassis, but let's start with the collision mitigation system that's on this uh, chassis. So down here you're going to see a sensor and this is the on guard uh, system and what it does is it's really broke down into three components. You have adaptive cruise control, you have a adaptive braking and then you have lane assist or lane departure warnings. So we're going to go through this one at a time. So the first thing is is the adaptive cruise control. So as you're driving down the road, there's a screen on the dash and we'll show you when we get inside. And it has yellow or green, yellow and red. So once you have your cruise control set, if you start to come up on somebody too fast, the cruise control is going to slow down. Then we have adaptive braking. And what happens there is it's really, so Meritor, these guys, they talk a lot about one second matters. And based on watching the videos, a lot of these collisions where you run into something could be avoided if the driver just had one extra second to react to it. So what they have on this adaptive braking is, if you're closing in on somebody, and they actually have videos where they show it in fog or in smoke where you can't even see, and there's an object slowed way down in front of you, it's going to just start applying the brakes immediately. And the whole theory behind it is to give you that one extra second for you to get on the brakes as well. We, in the tow truck industry, we've been selling these and we had a very emotional conversation with one of our customers who about a year and a half ago bought one of these on a tow truck. And I believe it's a, like a two to 3,000, maybe even $4,000 option on a tow truck. And he didn't really want to spend the money, but he did. And three days after buying the truck, um, somebody stopped in front of him and he had happened to be looking down and the brakes applied automatically. And he said it, it possibly saved his life. And from that moment on, every truck he's ever ordered has had this uh, collision mitigation system put on it. So we're, we're becoming bigger, bigger fans. One of the things that's a little annoying to me is when you're on the adaptive cruise or not even on adaptive cruise, if you get too close to somebody, you hear these beeps going off. And uh, you know, I was pretty frustrated by it. I kept getting beep, 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 and I couldn't shut the system off. And then I read on a forum board where another truck driver said, look, if this thing is beeping, you're just simply driving too fast or you're getting too close. And then I took that to heart and I started kind of slowing down. And when I hear it beep, I just back off the throttle a little bit and it doesn't beep anymore. And just to be honest with you, I'm a lot more relaxed when I get to my destination uh, by just following the rules. It's always looking at, if you're going 60 miles an hour, it's saying, hey, I gotta have six seconds between us because if we got our emergency stop, that's how much time it takes. The other thing we have is the lane assistance. And there's a sensor up here in the windshield. Disregard the little white sticker, that's what we hang our, uh, 
uh, stock numbers on. And the way that works is it doesn't keep you in the lanes. What it does if you're driving is the camera's looking at the white line on both sides. And if you drift over the line, you're gonna hear an audible alarm on the left side. And if you drift over on the right, you'll hear another audible alarm on the right side of the motorhome. It's kind of a buzzing sound. I was driving down the road with one of my friends last summer and uh, from Montana and he was riding with me. We were headed to salmon fishing in our motorhome and I kept kind of drifting over and it kept buzzing over his ear. And after about an hour, I go, does that sound annoy you? And he goes, what sound? I said, well, that buzzing. And he goes, oh, I thought I was just getting wrong answers when you were talking to me. So it's kind of an inside joke, I guess. But another sensor we have is on the, it's over here on the passenger side. And I'll show you that when we turn it around. But there's a sensor that's continually looking over here on the right side of the motorhome. And if a car or something gets over here, up in the A pillar, you're gonna see a, a, a red or yellow light flash, which is telling you that there's something over here. Hands down, for me and my family, this Freightliner chassis with this collision mitigation, right now, it's the only thing I wanna drive. Uh, it's just phenomenal in every way. A lot of people get, uh, on the post always tell me on the comments, don't use amazing and phenomenal, but well, it is. It's phenomenal when you drive this. It's an incredible experience. I feel much safer having my family in this. We'll talk a little bit more about this. So there's two holes right here. And when we open up the hood, you'll see that there's some toe rings that go right here. And, and uh, them are designed, if you get stuck, they can use them to pull out, but their main purpose is to be able to lift this thing up off the ground uh, when they need to undeck the chassis. LED headlights. My, I'm driving a 2021 Renegade right now with the LED headlights and as I get older, I appreciate being able to see better and, and I think Freightliner's just really come a long ways as well as all manufacturers in the lighting area. So we used to add a lot of driving lights. I'm so happy with ours. I'm, I didn't add extra driving lights this year. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt the hood. I've unlatched the other side. So kind of give you an idea what it's like to unlatch the hood. There's a step right here. You can put your foot if you want, and then you just pull down on the hood. Okay, now that the hood is up, you can kind of see the accessibility of this thing. So here's the oil fill. And just to be honest, um, I can't imagine you ever even needing to add oil on this thing. Uh, incredible service intervals on the engine. Depending on how you drive it, it's 25 to 35,000 miles between oil changes. Here's where you check the oil. Here's where you fill your power steering fluid. There's fuses located right here. You also have your uh, antifreeze right here. And everything is just very easy to, uh, easily and accessible. And that's why I say Getting one of these repaired versus a Class A is a lot easier because this is a truck. And when you go to a Freightliner dealership, um, everything, this is what they do. They work on these trucks day in and day out. I also wanna point out the steering gear on this and the front end. So this has an 18,000 pound front axle. So most over the road trucks have a 12,000 pound front. Renegade puts an 18,000 pound front in here. And what I like about that, it's not just a bigger axle. It's a big, bigger steering gear. It's a wider front tire. Um, you know, bridge laws say you can have 600 pounds per square inch of tire on the road. Um, this is a 315 tire, which designates how wide it is. So it has a really large carrying capacity. But when you go to an 18,000 pound front, everything else is beefed up in it. And currently, this is the biggest axle that we can get in this particular chassis. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and walk around to the other side. I know it's in the shadows, but I think it'd be a good time to talk about it right now. Transmission check right here, but that's also done electronically. So really, you're probably never ever gonna pull that out. Here's the tow hooks if you ever needed to get 
uh, winched out of a mud hole or something, the tow truck driver could use these tow hooks. You just unbolt them and then they install in the front bumper. Here's a positive and negative jump start. So if on this coach, you'd probably never use it because you can always use the generator to, to uh, upgrade your batteries. But if you did need a jump start, that's where it would occur. This is where you fill your uh, windshield washer coolant. And then the air cleaner, um, there's a sensor up here on the top. You, it's hard to see, but it's right here. And then there's a, there's a gauge there that'll tell you whether or not you need to change it. I would venture to say on this motorhome, you would change the air filter if you're running it on the highway about every 10 years. <laughs> so, you know, this is a million mile engine. It's literally designed to run a million miles and to go 25 to 35,000 be miles between oil changes. It, it, this thing is meant to be driven, pure and simple. It's made to be get out on the road and enjoy life and hammer down and run 80 miles an hour and, and be able to not only uh, stop it, but be able to drive it comfortably. It's just, just a great experience to be in this thing. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get in it because of the sun and we're gonna turn this thing around and talk. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and go back and uh, go through all the storage compartments since we're pointed in the right direction. Go ahead and close the hood and uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and start right here. So this right here is the uh, driver's side turn signal. We, so this is hooked to a camera on the dash. So when you turn on your left turn signal, it's looking back to see if there's anything here. There's also one on the right side. Here's your LED uh, side marker light. One thing I do like about these trucks is they're easy to get in and out of. So it's got a really nice grab handle here on the door. And then there's a really nice grab handle right here. And then there's a nice grab handle there. So I'm gonna go ahead and step right up. So it's very easy to get in, close the door. It also has a really nice, the mirrors are powered. So they're controlled here as well as heated. So you have incredibly good visibility um, out the side. Let me go ahead and step back out. I really like the ability when I pull into a truck stop to be able to climb out the driver's side door and I'm right here at the fuel island. On a class A, you have to climb and go out and around through the motorhome, track diesel fuel through the motorhome. Um, so this is where the diesel fuel goes. And this is the diesel exhaust fluid. It's also referred to as DEF. Currently, uh, this one I believe has 120 gallon diesel fuel tank and you have around 13 gallons of DEF. On my motor home, I have to fill the DEF up about every fourth fuel tank. So uh, it's real easy to do. Most of the truck stops have DEF right at the pump. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and come back. Now this compartment doesn't open because this is just a continuation of the fuel tank. Oops, we're locked. So great opportunity to show you the remote control key fob. So this has a door lock, so I can lock the doors of the motorhome and it has a cargo lock and unlock. So I'm gonna go ahead and just unlock all those right now. All right. Lithium battery upgrades, that's something that is new for 2021 and I've, I've got them on my motorhome and I'm just completely thrilled with what the lithium is bringing uh, to the RV industry. It's just, just phenomenal. There you go, I, I used that big word again, but it's truly exceptional the performance we're getting out of these. On this motorhome, you'll be able to um, watch TV all night long, use the microwave. It has nine lithium batteries on it. So, you know, I would venture to say you could run both TVs for probably eight to 10 hours without the generator running. Um, just, just a great upgrade. This fitting right here, you can unplug it. This is a air fitting, so we'll include an air hose with it. So if you wanna air up your tires or air up a raft or anything you have onboard air right there. But this is uh, 
just the battery compartment, but I really wanted you to just kind of take a moment just to look and see how, you know, I think Renegade's done a very nice job of, of tying up the wires and making this a real good compartment. Okay. This compartment right here is just a small storage compartment. This is where on mine I keep my uh, windshield washer solvent and things like that. If you buy a motorhome from us, we've got a lot of photos to show you how people have been setting up their motorhomes and we'd be glad to help you with all that. So this is your sewage compartment right here. So there's a sewage tank here, but look down there and you can see that heater. You'll see the two shiny fans and that's the aqua hot heat exchanger that we have installed in the sewage compartment. And what that does is that this coach has aqua hot on it, which is a diesel fired or an electric boiler. And what it does is it heats up and it circulates hot glycol throughout the motorhome. So it's circulating hot glycol down through the basement here and through this heat register, and we have a thermostat in this other compartment. So if you're using this and it's below zero or below freezing, you can turn the thermostat on and the, this heater will kick on and warm up this compartment so you don't have to worry about things freezing. I think it's the absolute best solution that money can buy right now. I don't think you can spend more money to buy anything better than what we're equipping in here. You'll also notice this black finish and that is a ceramic temp coat and that's a space age technology that we have Renegade applying here to help keep this thing winterized. This is our macerator uh, sewage pump. Now most motorhomes come with a three inch black sewer pipe or sewer hose and you have to undo this deal and you got to string it out and most RV parks require that you put, lay it to a certain grade. So you got to set out these little stair steps and you got to go through all that rigmarole. We like the macerator. Literally it's this hose. I believe this hose is about 20 feet long. Um, I'm not going to pull it all out, but to jump dump the sewer, you literally just set this in the sewer pipe, turn the valve on, hit the switch and it pumps all the sewage out. If you're at a racetrack or something and uh, a portable uh, honey pot truck comes by, you can literally just stick this up in there and you can pump it. So sometimes it does run uphill. <laughs> now, if you're gonna be long-term at an RV park and you don't wanna run the macerator, you can hook your three inch sewer hose on right here. This just quick disconnects and you can go ahead and set that up if you're gonna be long-term. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and go into the water management compartment and I'm gonna go ahead and step on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here. So this is the low point drain. And when it comes time to winterize it, if you wanna drain the water, you can just open this valve up and it's gonna drain all the water that's exposed. So it's gonna drain all of that water uh, that's from here to the uh, the water heaters and all that, and it's gonna drain all that water backwards. This is your low point spigot, and this is a pressurized water spigot. So if you wanna run a hose, so on my motorhome, a lot of times I carry a or stretch a hose, so if I have a really bad buggy windshield, I'll just hook my water hose on there and I can spray the bugs off the windshield, wash the motorhome. It's kinda of nice to have that option. This switch is your flow jet and that turns on the pump on the macerator to pump all of the waste out of the motorhome. This here is a whole house water filter. So as you fill the coach, it's filtering all of the water before it goes into the tank. This is the spray away nozzle. So we can pull this guy out and there's just a high pressure sprayer that you connect on right here and then you can uh, wash out a cooler or what, what have you. It stores in here. This is the black uh, tank, and that's everything that comes out of the toilet. And then you have your gray tank dump, which is everything that comes out of the sinks and the shower. So normally when you go to dump everything, you'll dump your black tank first, 
and then you'll dump your gray tank and then that soapy water cleans the hoses out. So it, it's really quite simple to do the servicing on these. This is where you're gonna fill the water. And if, as you're hooking up the water, this lever up means it's, you're gonna go directly to the sinks and this will fill the 150 gallon water storage tank under the bed. This is for cable TV and this is your black tank uh, sprinkler. So every once in a while, you're gonna wanna hook a fresh water hose up to that and then there's a little sprinkler inside of the black tank and it washes all of the poo and goo off the side walls and flushes it out. Another comment that always gets said is what is that? And that's just simply the exhaust pipe. And people say it's low and it's not. It's about nine to 10 inches off the ground, but I've never heard of a single person tearing one off. The reason it's shaped the way it is is when the exhaust regeneration uh, occurs, uh, this exhaust gets very hot, so they, they, they shape it down. And I wanna talk a little bit about the rear axle on this. So this rear axle has a 23,000 pound gross axle weight rating. And what that means is if you were to put this on a scale and weigh just the rear axle, Freightliner says this could weigh up to 23,000 pounds. So that's what the rear axle is designed to carry and stop, it's 23,000 pounds. The front axle is 18,000 pounds. So if you were to put those two together on a scale, you'd have a, gr or a gross vehicle weight rating of 41,000 pounds. So that's saying, if I put the motor home on the scale and I weighed it, I could weigh up to 41,000 pounds and that's what everything's designed to haul. Now, if I put a trailer behind this, it has a gross combination weight rating of 60,000 pounds. So in combination, it's designed to haul and stop up to 60,000 pounds. So you can see this is a very competent motorhome. It also is equipped with air disc brakes and that's, you know, I could go into great detail on that, but air disc brakes, we feel is just a vast improvement over what used to be out there. So all of our signature series motorhomes, we order with air disc brakes. Another thing um, that we do is we offer air ride, or this motorhome has air ride. So what happens is there's a leveling valve in there. So as you're driving down the road, as the weights increase, the air continually brings you back to a level ride height but it also has an air dump valve feature. So we're gonna go ahead and dump the air right now so you can see how that works. Okay, so the, a lot of people will say, well, why having an air dump valve? What's so important about that? Well, what's really neat about it is let's say here's your trailer hitch, uh, the tongue of your trailer and you back up, you can dump the air back up and come up under your hitch and you can lower the back of the motorhome. But where I really find the value in it is, let's say, you know, we're, me and my family, we're using travel hosts now. So we, we're staying at some rural campsites and we pull in and the front of the motorhome is maybe the front here, maybe we're downhill just a little bit and the motorhome's setting like this. I can dump the rear air and level the motor home up. So it's a great tool to use, you know, that way. Another thing I want to talk about is the big debate over single axle versus tandem axle. And to be honest with you, in my opinion, the first deciding point, whether I go single axle or tandem is the length of the motor home. Anything under 38 foot, we feel a single axle is right sized if you're only gonna haul a single level trailer. It, by only running one single rear axle, you get extra storage compartment, you get an improved turning radius, you get improved fuel mileage, and we just feel it's right sized. It's perfectly sized for a 38 foot motorhome. Can we put a tandem axle on a 38 footer? Yes, but you're gonna lose a lot of storage compartment because you got that extra wheel here so you lose compartments here and compartments on the other side. And you also give up turning radius and you do increase your fuel mileage or decrease fuel mileage. Really, 
it, it, it boils down to length. So if you want to build a motorhome over 38 foot in length, 39 or 40, automatically we would shift you over to a tandem axle. If you were going to pull a stacker trailer with this, we would encourage you to go to a tandem axle. Can you pull a stacker with this and be legal? Absolutely, but you got to be weight conscious of the tongue. I guess what I'm trying to say is when we build a signature series, we're building what we think is right. You know, I had a fellow the other day talk to me and he says, well, I can get a motorhome for less money. Um, and I said, well, you probably could, but it, is it apples for apples? And he goes, well, it, it doesn't have the upgraded insulation and it, it doesn't have all the lights outside and it doesn't have air disc brakes. I'm like, well, we can do that too. I mean, if that's what you really want, but here's what I can assure you, you're not, you're not gonna go 10 years from now and say, geez, I wish I had less lights on the motorhome, or geez, I wish I didn't have air disc brakes. So I guess I'm just trying to tell you that when we build a signature series, we're doing the absolute best that we can do. Irregardless of cost, it's all about function of, functionality and not having any regrets. But hey, if you wanna build a lot less cheap or more price sensitive motorhome, we can help you with that too, but it's just not gonna have the Signature Series uh, brand on it. We're just not gonna do that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and move you back here and talk about the generator. So this is a 8,000 watt or an eight kilowatt Cummins zoning generator. And we really feel it's, again, it's right powered. It's the perfect size for this motorhome. You still have extra um, amperage available should you need it. And I always tell everybody, you know, people trade in a motorhome and they're like, hey, my generator only has 100 hours on it. And in my mind, I'm like, well, that's a bummer. You should be out using this thing. You should be putting thousands of hours on your generator. And, and you know, to me, a badge of honor would be to own a Renegade and say, I put 300,000 miles on this thing. That tells us you're out living and enjoying it. This is the best of the best. You should be out using it and running them. That's what they're designed to do. This actually has a Kubota tractor engine in it. Um, it's just made to run hard. Now in this back compartment, we have our cord reel and we opt for the power cord reel on all of our signature series. So when it's time to put up this 50 amp reel, you just wind it in. The other thing we do is we put a 110 outlet in there so you can have extra power source here at the back of the motorhome. Well, before we transition into the back, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the motorhome and turn it around so we can have a little bit better lighting on there. So I'll be right back. Well, here we are on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and set this iPad right here so I can remind myself to talk about it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start out. Well, actually, we're gonna start here at the back of the motorhome. So here we are at the rear. And a couple things that we do, and I, I mention it all the time, but I really wanna make sure that, uh, you know, I'm speaking to first timers. If you look at the, marker lights on this thing. They're all just a truck light that you could buy at any Napa Auto Parts store. But from a, a being a, you know, a first responder, it, it's nice to have them emergency lights up high. So we have uh, marker lights up high and we add a third brake light, but IWS sells our shop. If you want, like my motorhomes, we install a strobe light so that you can have strobe lights up high. So if you come to the stop in the middle of a freeway, you can just flip your emergency strobe lights on and all your marker lights are gonna flash. So uh, it's just something that we brought over from the towing industry. You can also see up there, we have the high backup camera. So when you're backing up to your trailer hitch by yourself, you can see right here, it's very easy to hook these up. I find it almost as easy as hooking up my pickup. We have a extra area light there in the back, which helps you at night if you're hooking up on a trailer or just you know, we were in the hills the other day and kids were running all over at dark in and out of the creek and whooping and hollering and we were able to turn some lights on so they could keep playing at night. It was really fun to watch. 
We all remember what it's like to be a kid up in the hills running around chasing each other in the dark. Um, this here is just another backup light. We can also install additional backup lights, but between this one and that one, you're good. And that light can be ran off of your cell phone too, so you can turn it on or off. This is a seven-way plug if you want to hook up your trailer. This Voyager plug right here is if you want to run a camera inside your trailer. Some customers have us do that so they can see their load. Or if you want a camera on the back of your trailer, we can do that. Now this hitch right here is actually a 40,000 pound hitch that's derated to 20,000 pounds. Why do they derate it? Because it has a single rear axle. So remember me saying this has a gross combination weight rating of 60,000 pounds. So the chassis is 41,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. So you can put up to a 19,000 pound trailer in theory behind this and still be perfectly fine. It's also fully adjustable up and down. And then you have your air glad hands, which most people running this would never use. But if you ever do pull a trailer with air brakes, you're all set up to go. You'll see two exhaust pipes on here. So this exhaust pipe is for the generator. And this exhaust pipe is for the, uh, geez, why can't I think right now? Thank you, Zach. Cameraman Zach, you came in right there. Aqua hot, and it's for the aqua hot diesel. When you're burning the diesel burner side, the exhaust will come out here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and move around and talk about these compartments. Almost everything here on, on this side of the motorhome is all storage. Close this door. Now, incidentally, each of these doors has a electronic uh, remote, as I showed you earlier. Here's your Aqua Hot. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it in, in this video because we're really focused about the chassis, but it does have Aqua Hot heat through it. Here's the docking light on this side. We also have uh, a two-stage awning up there that we're not gonna put out. That vent right there is for the dryer. Okay, we're open up this compartment. As you can see, you have a really large storage compartment here. All of our compartments are, are steel on the bottom. There's people selling motorhomes out there <laughs> with uh, plastic in the bottom. And when they drive along on the heat, the heat of the asphalt heats up the plastic and the plastic warps. So it's just unbelievable, uh, some of the cheap stuff out there. All of these have lights in them. Another storage compartment here. Another big storage compartment here. And then this compartment has batteries, some more lithium, and it also has an inverter in it as well. We're doing almost all exclusively now, we're doing outside TVs on our signature series, and it's a 40 inch TV with a sound bar. Um, it's something that I'm starting to enjoy more and more to be able to sit out in the evening, especially now with the COVID, there's not a better way to just get out and social distance. You know, we can now watch TV outside with friends and still keep our social distancing. Uh, Motorhomes has been, for me and my family, it's like freedom. We can just jump in it and get away from it all. Go somewhere, you know, with the big generator, we've got satellite TV, we got Wi-Fi extenders on these, big generator sets, 150 gallons of fresh water on board. Me, my wife, and let's say we take one of the boys with us, we could be out for four, five, six days on the water and still take nice showers. Um, it's just really uh, changed living for us, especially in these times. Well, we're gonna let this airplane go over and I'm gonna talk to you about some new technology. Okay, now that the plane's gone over, I'm looking at the sun. I think it'd be better, Zach, if we walk over here in the shade and. I'm real excited to show this technology and, you know, being a little bit uh, older in age, I've, I'm always jumpy about technology, but when you see this, it's just quite easy to use. And a lot of this is normally we won't share it um, unless you become a customer of ours because this is part of our advantage package, but this is actually, um, 
one of the iPads, the, the iPad you would get if you buy this motorhome we've engraved in the back, you know, IWS sells Let Your Adventure Begin because we really do believe that when you buy a coach from us, you know, uh, a new adventure begins for you. So I'm gonna turn on how you would get your iPad. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and open this thing up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the smart leveling system. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it. So this is the automatic jack system. I know on the last motorhome I did with the Pete, I didn't talk about the jacks and I saw in the comments, people wanted to know more. Um, so how you would work it is you just touch the power button now we want to level the motorhome. So this tells us our status. So I'm going to go ahead and hit auto level. Now you can see the status is operating. And I don't know if Zach can get a good shot, but the jacks are coming down automatically and they're going to start leveling. And incidentally, if you see this front jack, Zach, you see how big it is? So we install on our signature series, we make our own a large foot so you don't have to crawl under the motorhome and stick a board underneath there. So that's something that we've invented and developed and we've installed. Now the motorhome is going through its leveling process all on its own. I don't have to do anything. And we're really kind of showing you real time how long it takes to hook up. Normally when the motorhome's leveling, I'm going to be hooking up the water and the power. Okay, well, we're almost completely leveled. There, you heard an audible, so the motorhome's leveled. So I'm going to turn the power off, and we're leveled. You can hear the air dump valve dumping some of the air. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and run the slides out. So what we want to do is go to the Vega Touch here. And we have all kinds of functions. You got your home button. We can turn, in fact, let's just go ahead and turn the exterior lights on. If you want to pan up there, I'm going to just go ahead and turn the lights on so I can turn them on or I can turn them off from outside. I can turn, you know, storage compartment on. So let's say I get over here and I open up a storage compartment and I forgot the lights. I can just come right over here and hit that button, turn the storage compartment on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn all the lights off. Okay, now we're gonna go to the slides. And when I touch the slide button, it just says to confirm uh, that you're in a nice safe area. Now, I parked here because you can see we've got these pine trees here at the house. And if you were worried about your slide bumping into something, you can just stand outside. So we're gonna go ahead and go touch the slide button. And this is the sofa slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and just push this button right now. And I'm holding it while the slide is extending. And again, it just gives you lots of confidence to be standing outside. Now at any point, I can just lift my finger and I've stopped it. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue to run the slide out. Another neat thing while the slide's coming out is you'll notice how uh, Renegade carried the stripes on through the, through the slides. Now, the, the stripes are gonna align here because the slide actually comes out and then it drops down a little bit. There it goes, which, which aligns it with the floor on the inside. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the bedroom slide out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just touch the extend button. And now we're running this motor home, or this slide out. And again, if I, any time I want to stop, I just take my fingers off. Okay, so now that we've done that, it's time to go inside the motor home and we're going to talk um, about it and I hope, you know what I wanna do, Zach? I'm gonna go ahead and run these slides in because I wanna make sure that I've done a good walkthrough with the slides in because I know that was on the last comments and I don't think I did a good enough job. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, retract all the slides. There you go. 
You know, one thing that I want to talk about before we we go in too far is a lot that goes on right here. And I something that I think is very important and impressive. And one of them is obviously we have the touchpad entry, which is something I really like, but the renegade boot step. And I, I haven't been talking about it a lot. And maybe if I step over here, Zach. So renegade has designed this little boot step where you can, when you come in, you can just slide your shoes off and stick them right here. But another neat thing is here's an aqua hot heat exchanger. So when you turn the aqua hot on, the hot glycol is circulating through it and there's a little fan in there. And when it calls for heat here, it blows heat out. So it really keeps your step warm, keeps it dried. But what I'll do if I'm out in the rain is I set my shoes right there and then I have a great shoe dryer as well. And that's just, uh, just kind of a neat little feature. Um, nice big grab handle so it's nice and easy to go up inside the motorhome. Okay, so we're inside the motorhome and I've intentionally left it dark and to kind of show you a couple things. So you have a couple options when it comes to turning the light on. One, you can use your iPad or you can use your phone. And you can actually turn the lights on from the outside. All you do is touch Lightmaster and all the lights come on in the motorhome. So uh, it's kind of nice for you even come in, you can turn them on or off. Or when you come in, you can just touch this screen right here and turn the lights on or off. And then you can control the intensity of each one and you can do all of that function there. But for this video, I'm gonna kind of focus on the iPad. So what's kind of neat is when you go to the home screen is you can see the temperature, the front 77, the rear 78. Fresh water's at 65%, the gray's at 70, and the black is empty. Um, the reason that these have water in them right now is because our shop does another uh, test when we get them. You can turn the water pump on, turn the water pump off. Tank heaters, you can turn the aqua hot on. Um, we can also go to uh, temperature, and this is where we can turn the AC on and off. You can use the air conditioners, the heat pump, the aqua hot. You can do an engine preheat, and that's where we'll take the aqua hot and divert some of the coolant through the engine to warm the engine up. So we have all of these neat little functions here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start the gen set. Gonna hold the button down. It's asking can to confirm. There we go, and the generator started. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run the air conditioning, and we're gonna run the generator as we do this whole video. So hopefully you kind of have an understanding a little bit about that. And I also want to turn around here. Zach, maybe I could let you come by because I do want to talk about this counter a little bit. So you can see these lights in the counter and underneath, and that's an application. And you can come here to the app and you can choose the colors. So if I want to go more blue or I want to go red, hopefully you can see the counter changing as I touch the lights. Is that working for you, Zach? Um, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna go in, go to lights, and I'll turn all the um, interior lights off. And then I'm gonna come back in and turn just this on. And then hopefully I can go back to this app. Okay, now if I wanna go red, if I wanna go green, all these different colors I could display to accent the lighting panel in it. And you, you've got customs, you can put it to the music. If you wanna have a dance party in here, you can do all of that. So it's kind of a neat little function. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights back on inside. And I'm gonna back up a little bit to kind of help people understand. So this has an arrow cap and I really like this if you don't need a bunk because you have lots of room. So as you can see, I have access I can use the refrigerator while the slides are in. I can sit down here at the dinette. I can use all of the slide out drawers. I can use the induction cooktop, everything. 
with the slide in. Now we're going to have to kind of do a little bit of a pirouette because I want to show you the back of the motorhome. And you can see as I'm in here, we have full function of the bathroom, the shower, the washer and dryer. All of that can be accessed with the storage, with the slides in. And you can even lay on the bed while the slides are in. So with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and run the slides out and then kind of start the formal tour of the inside of the coach. So I hope you understand that I do read these comments. And uh, another thing that we've done is a lot of people said that maybe they were tired of all the browns. So we switched to um, some new colors in this coach. And, and I really hope you like that we've lightened up the floor. We've gone to the new wood stock on the walls. We brought in some different fabrics in here to try to, you know, it's very, one thing that I've always said is, I'm not building my motor home, we're building your motor home. So we can't just do everything that we want, we gotta do what you want. So I want you to know that we're, we are listening to you and we're trying. Okay, now we're here, we're gonna do a, a little bit more formal review of the interior as Zach does a nice slow pan around just to help you see this, uh, new Brescia silver flooring, as well as the wood stock wood. On the cabinets, we've gone a little more contemporary with what's called an epic slab finish. And we're hoping that it you know, resonates well with you, our viewers, and I'm sure you'll give me feedback. One thing I do want to set the preference or the preface is that, you know, we're not staging this stuff. So we have the generator running right now. We also have the air conditioners, both of them running, because I really wanted you to feel, you know, have, have an understanding of what it's like to be inside of these. And I'm talking with a pretty low voice. The, our extreme weather package, not only does it offer R26 insulation value, but it offers soundproofing. And it, it, for me, it's just a big decompression chamber to come in here and it's just like everything changes. It gets quieter, it gets calmer. It's, it's just very soothing for me. All right, here's the 40 inch TV. And a little thing that we do is we ask uh, Renegade to install a little bit bigger uh, TV slide so we can bring the TV out and, and aim it which just little things like that just make watching TV or your whole RV experience a little nicer. Other things that we do, as far as we know, we're the only people doing this, is we ask Renegade to install two grab handles so when you're exiting the door, you have two, two firm holds on it. We have these coat hooks put over the door and our whole thought process behind it is if you come in with wet, wet clothing, you can hang it here and it'll drip down onto the uh, the steps. We also have coat hangers right here, so uh, another great place just to hang coats and hang, hang hats, so lots of functionality right here in the doorway. Now we're going to move over here to the to the kitchen, and as you can see, we've gone, not that we've gone away from it, but just on this motorhome we went to the epic slab doors instead of the raised panel. Again, we're building this motorhome for you, for you so if you don't like the slab and you want to go more traditional, we can order that for you too. But our, our goal was to go quite a bit more contemporary. <clears throat> As you can see, there's lots of overhead storage. Look at the thickness of the, of the wood. This is uh, maple, all maple wood cabinets. And this is a full width door. This isn't just a, a cheap panel on it, okay? Uh, recessed hinges on them. There's lots of storage above the microwave as well. I'll go ahead and slide this drawer out. You can see the dovetail construction right here. And this is called a stack silverware drawer, which is becoming more and more popular. So you can get extra silverware down there where you have this drawer that slides above it. All of the drawers are soft close. This is stuff that you would expect to see in a custom built high-end home. So lots of storage. And then here at the sink, you got a little spot to keep your sponges and stuff like that. Now you can remove these 
sink covers. I'll go ahead and set them out of the way. And you can see we have a large single bowl sink. And again, it's your choice if you want a double bowl. On our signature series, we've just gone to all single bowls. People really like these to be able to fit a cooler in it, or you can wash a kid or a dog in it. It's uh, it, it's just worked out very well. On our motorhome, we have a little plastic tub we set in here that we have the soap in, and it seems to be working out very good. We do two uh, wall outlets right here for your toaster, coffee pot, cell phones. <clears throat> Convection microwave on it. I, I try to make an emphasis on every video that we've liked ours so much, we have one in our own home. The true induction cooktop is pretty much, I don't remember selling a motorhome without them since we've switched to it. And uh, we really owe that to the Mays in New York who bought a coach from us because they really did a lot of testing with it and, and got me to try one and we just love it. And what I really like about it is you don't have to remove any covers, so this all becomes usable counter space. We also like it with the kids. If you accidentally turn it on, well, I, so I have it on right now, it won't do anything unless you have a magnetic or a metallic surface on here. There's a magnet that has to activate or that, so this won't get hot. Really like that. There's some more storage. And this I really owe to my wife because she wanted an area to keep lots of pots and pans. So we, we really worked in a, an area for that on this coach. Here's our slide out pantry. And we have all these deep bins. It works out good to keep chips and bread. And again, this is the exact same one that I have in my own motorhome. So we're really out testing it and, and we know what works. This compartment has all the electronics. And it's really neat because like you can go to B1, macerator toilet. So you can come up here and look and see whether that system is functional or not by the green lights. Before we go a whole lot further, I do want to talk a little bit about our Advantage package. And that's why I was referencing these LED lights is when you buy this coach, you get our Advantage package. And what's included in that is our cell phone. So 24 hours a day, you can call somebody so we can walk you through the diagnostic procedures or you can find the help right here in the iPad. So here's an example. And we've been a little hesitant to show this to the public because we didn't want our competition to see it, but I think it's important for you to understand our Advantage package, it, it, it really is a value. So when you get this iPad, you can go to contacts and we preload everybody's cell phone. So there's the general manager's cell phone, there's Ben's cell phone, Mike's cell phone, and I'm actually gonna ask Zach to blur them out because you can't have those unless you buy the motorhome. We also have CoachNet, which is, we offer five years of premium membership so you have five years of roadside assistant when you buy a motorhome from us. Here's the contact information for Freightliner. Here's the contact information for Renegade RV, and we preload that on there. We also have uh, what to do if in the event that you're in an accident. We have some more stuff, but I can't show you everything. You gotta buy the motorhome. But one thing that I can show you is our Advantage videos. So these videos, uh, like how to connect shore power, this is a video that's embedded in here. You cannot get this unless you buy a motorhome from us. And the reason that this works out so good is if you're out in the middle of the night and you don't remember how to plug something in, you can just watch the quick little video and we're gonna walk you through how to do that. So that's about all of that that I wanna show you. And we're gonna keep on with the tour. Obviously, we got a refrigerator right here, double door, so there's lots of room in it. You do have a slide out, let me unlock it over here. Uh, freezer tray with a nice maker in it. This is where your direct TV would go. This has a WineGuard Traveler satellite on it. So this is the big satellite that's gonna power up on the roof. And the reason we use that one is because it's the only true way to get a full HD direct TV and the ability to DVR it. 
So like in our motor home, we do a lot of boondocking. Maybe we can't get out because of the trees. So we DVR a whole bunch of direct TV shows and then we can play them back off the DVR. We also have the WineGuard um, Wi-Fi booster. So you can pay to have an unlimited subscription like I've done on mine. I think it's about $45 a month and we have unlimited boosted Wi-Fi inside our motorhome. There's actually a little satellite dome on top of the motorhome and that's new for 2020 or on this 2021. I also want to point out that we have a nice air conditioning vent right here so we can keep all of the components cool. Well now we've moved around you can see we've got the uh, passenger seat swiveled around just to give you an idea. You know it's just another place to kind of kick back if you had some guest on it. You can swivel the driver's seat, but it's pretty challenging, so we, we normally won't do that. We're gonna come back to the chassis. I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the dinette. Uh, both of them have slide out drawers, which is a great place for storage. <clears throat> Renegade for 2021 has went back to their real nice curved dinette. And another neat thing that they did is they've made it a little bit wider, so now it's easier for four adults to sit here. I really like this curved backing. It's just a nice place to kick back. You can pivot the TV, you've got a nice view of it. Also for 2021, they brought the 110 and USB outlets from underneath the counter. They've now moved them up here, which I think was a really good move. <clears throat> We've also been in, on our signature series installing the power shades. They're very easy if you wanna lower the shades. You just push the button and all the shades come down. Now the bedroom shades, they operate manually so people can't be messing with the bedroom shades. You just push a button. You can also control whether you wanna you know, lower one, two, three, four, or five. Um, just a really nice feature. As you can see on that side of the dinette, there's seat belts on the forward facing. So now you're gonna have two people sitting at the dinette as you're traveling down the road. This table will also go down and convert this into a bed. You can see we got lots of storage up above. All of these overhead bins open up, lots of storage. This has padded walls, so it gives it a real luxurious feel. But not only that, it's just one more level of soundproofing. Now keep in mind, this whole time the generator's running as well as the air conditioners. You can control all the lights via your touchscreen but you can also turn them on or off here on these panels, and they do have the dimming ability. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about these theater seats, and they're becoming more and more popular with our customers, you know. In our motorhome, we used to carry a sofa, and so, you know, that once or twice a year when we have a extra guest with us, we could fold out a sofa bed, and. You know, we really came to the conclusion that we're going to build this motorhome for us and our lifestyle. And 95% of the times, it's just uh, me, my wife, and one of our kids. And we decided to try the theater seats because we like to come home in the evening and just kind of put your feet up for a little bit. And it's just quite enjoyable to come back. I'll go ahead and lay this thing all the way back. You know, even if we do have a guest, they can... They can sleep right here or they can put an air mattress on the floor. It's nice to have, I've got my outlet for my cell phone. Um, if you have a CPAP machine, you know, you could plug it in right there. And it's just really enhanced uh, spending time in a motorhome, especially those days when it's raining and you're stuck in the motorhome. You also have uh, drink holders, as well as a place to store your remote controls. Uh, Again, this is becoming more and more popular, and it's something I really think, you know, there's no right or wrong whether you have a sofa or a theater seat. It just really depends on your lifestyle. But for us, uh, it's sure been enjoyable having it in our coach this year. Uh, we also install a full-length mirror right here. At, um, it really helps to kind of open up the space a little bit. Well, now we're gonna go ahead and, and come back here into the mid-bath and the mid-baths are becoming more and more popular. It's really the only way we can give you a large bedroom and all that living space in a 38-foot package. And the way we do that is by not having a private toilet. But I'm becoming to like this more and more because it gives you a lot more room in here for dressing. 
Uh, we have a really nice linen closet. You can remove these shelves if you want. We've got a curtain rod up there if you'd rather use that. Um, but it just adds a lot more storage. And as I mentioned earlier, you've got a washer and dryer here. So the dryer's on top, the washer's on the bottom. We have a real nice vanity, medicine cabinet, a very big shower. Um, I can go ahead and step in here to kind of give you an idea. I'm six foot tall and I have lots of room in here to reach over the top of my head. We've also been installing a skylight. It kind of adds a, an extra level of uh, light in here. Okay, another thing I want to point out as we look over here is that uh, we, this, this coach is equipped with heated floors, so them controllers are right here, which is really nice to, you know, if you get up in the middle of the night and you're barefoot, you've got warm floors. A lot of times in the fall, if we're at an RV park or something and it's just a little bit cool, we won't run any of the heaters. We just let the floor heat kind of radiate through the coach. Our dogs like it because they can lay on the floor and be warm, uh, as well as kids when they're playing around. We have the macerator toilet, and this is a full porcelain toilet. And it's, it does have a little bit of an elongated seat, and I'm gonna sit on it because that has come up and it's, it's comfort height. It's not you know too short, it's not too tall. Well, here we are in the, in the bedroom, and this is a mini king bed. I'm six foot, and uh, I'll go ahead and flop down on here just to kind of give you an idea how I fit on this bed. So this is what we have in our motor home. As you can see, I got plenty of room at the bottom end, room at the top, lots of room beside me. Uh, it's worked out really good for us. Here's the powered window. So you can open and close the rear window from right here, or the shade. Above the bed, um, there's reading lights here. Oh, you have to turn them on here. There's also shade controls here, so when you're laying in bed, you can look up and operate the controls. You've got a nice spot here uh, to keep a drink holder. You've got a nice pistol storage area or a place to keep your CPAP machine. There's a 110 outlet on each side. You also got lots of storage above it. As I move around here, I'm gonna open up all of these drawers. So for 2021, we've been doing cedar lined closets. I know I uh, didn't think much of it, but my wife has sure enjoyed it. She just loves the smell of cedar. And if Zach can reach in, you'll see that the finish work on this uh, Renegade has continued it all to the back, even the places that you can't normally see, they carry the same level of detail to the finish. And that keeps the little wood fibers from catching on your uh, clothing. It's just that extra level of craftsmanship. Okay. We also have storage down low, lots of 110 outlets. We Put the ceiling fan, I really enjoy that in the summer evenings to be able to just crack the windows and run the ceiling fan. Also our vent location, so we mount our vents as far back as we can, so in the evening you can open the kitchen window and you'll be able to pull cool air clear across the bed and then up and out. And all of this stuff is just stuff we've been learning from years and we're just trying to do the absolute best we possibly can. And just little things like that just make a big difference when you're out traveling in a coach. Well, now we're gonna go up and focus on the chassis because this video is really about focusing on the chassis. All right, well, here we are up in the uh, driver's seat of this Freightliner, and I think I'd, I'd like to start out with just showing you a little bit about the seat. So this is an air ride seat, so we can control the height of it, raise and lower it, all here by air control. And it also has you know, a nice air ride floating feel to it. It's very easy to move forward and backwards. You just lift this bar up and then the seat moves forward and backwards. The armrests are kind of neat because once you set the height, 
they always go back to that exact same position. And you have one for, for both arms, so I almost like to ride with them just a little bit high. The steering column, so on the steering wheel, you have your cruise control on and off and your cancel controls here. You have your marker light interrupter right here. So let's, if, let's say you pass somebody and they flash their headlights and say it's okay to move over, you can push this and just wink your uh, marker lights at them. This came from the trucking industry. And then this button here, you can turn on or off your engine brake. Obviously there's the little horn and here's the big air horn. You, to, you can move the steering wheel up or down and you can move it in and out just by pushing this foot pedal that's down here, okay? As I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, the grab handles and everything are very easy to get a hold of. It's real easy to open the door. You got nice storage down there. And we, we install upgraded speakers here. You got your power windows, your door locks, and then your mirror adjustment. As I mentioned outside, you have an air application gauge and that's right here. So the more I push on the air brakes, the more uh, what percentage of the brakes I'm using. So roughly, in general terms, you have 100, 120 PSI of air on the truck. So when I'm pushing 50 PSI, I'm using half of my brakes. Okay, you just have your regular complement of gauges over here. I'll, I'll go ahead and walk you through them. There's nothing to be intimidated about on these. You have your uh, engine oil temperature. You have your axle temperature. This is the air, the amount of weight that's on the um, airbags. Water temperature, RPM. This is a lane searching light, so that's say it's looking outside and it's not seeing the two white lines. Um, we can cycle through all of this trip controls right here. There's a, gives you the temperature, your average fuel mileage. Right now, this motorhome driving out here averaged 8.1 miles per gallon. Fuel gauge, that tells you how much of the def fluid you've used. Oil PSI, here's your speedometer. Air pressure in the two tanks, you have a primary and a secondary tank. Transmission temperature. Air trailer parking brake. This is the parking brake for the motorhome. Gauge cluster lights, uh, emergency flasher. This is the live well or the foot well. I'm thinking fishing, but this puts a light down here where your feet are. You turn it on and off. Your three stage engine brake, exhaust regeneration, your override shutdown, automatic traction control. This is a menu function for the gauge clusters. Your mirror heats, heat mirror heat, your docking lights. Cigarette lighter, 12 volt outlet. You got two drink holders. Fan control, temperature control, fan selector settings. This is how you raise and lower the air differential. This is a locking, or raise the air in the rear airbags. Locking differential, so if one wheel spins, you can flip this lever and it'll lock it. Tire pressure monitor, so it monitors the air pressure in all the tires. That's a Freightliner standard issue. Um, this is a sensor that we put in for the uh, Alpine TV. This is how you toggle from the truck backup camera to the trailer. Here's your trailer brake. Here's your collision mitigation. So right now it's telling you it's not active right now because we're not driving and moving. So this is our Alpine Halo 9. This is our upgraded stereo package that we put on the signature series. We do this at our shop. Um, we felt we put an incredible package together. We have uh, great Alpine speakers, amplifiers. It's just really enhanced the sound, but it also enhances the driving experience by being this big nine inch screen so we can go to the camera. So lots of functions here that we have control of. So you can see we have the hitch guide on so that aligns you with the trailer hitches. But we can turn that guide off. Oops, excuse me, guide on, hitch guide off. And then we also have these marker guides on. We can turn on or off. 
We also have turn signals, so when I turn my left turn signal on, we have a view out the left side of the motorhome. We have to let it uh, stop and reset, and then we can turn the right-hand turn signal on. Now you can see out of it. And you can also run with that rear view camera on uh, when you're traveling down the road. And personally, I like to have it on because it lets me know if there's other people over here and I can also watch my pickup. And then uh, you can also use Pandora, Cirrus XM. Um, it doesn't have navigation and the reason is is because most people with smartphones, once you plug in, your phone navigation shows right up on the screen. And uh, it's proven to be something that our customers really like when they have this. You do have some storage up here, sunglass storage here. You've got these red lights, so at night it's proven that red lights don't obstruct your view, so the driver and passenger have those, as well as some additional reading lights and, and cargo area lights. You also have a lockable storage compartment up here. And I talked about the mitigation system, and you can see the yellow light up there on the A-pillar. And that alarm changes as people come up and beside you. One more thing I want to point out, and this may be the first time we've ever showed it, but for several years we design and produce our own drink holder because there's never, never a, a drink holder for the passenger. And my wife really helped us design this. We wanted a spot for your cell phone and a water bottle. And, we don't offer these for sale. Um, again, this is all part of our exclusive advantage package. Well, that kind of wraps up everything here in the, in the front compartment. One, oh, one thing I do want to talk about is uh, one of the reasons that I really like this Detroit engine is it does come with a virtual technician. So there's been instances in our motorhome where we're driving down the road and a check engine light will come on and almost immediately I'm going to get a text uh, from Detroit that says, hey, a uh, warning light just come on in your motorhome. It's something you need to get fixed on your next service or it's something that you need to get immediate service work done on. Uh, one time I was driving down the road and I wasn't getting full throttle and I had, um, I had a, an aftermarket carpeted floor mat in here. And I said, man, I don't have any power. And they were able to remote in while I was driving down the road to tell me that I wasn't um, getting full throttle uh, position, or at least they thought that's what it was. And I realized that I had that up underneath the throttle pedal. So just little things like that just really enhance the driving experience. Well, I'm, I hope I covered everything that you guys on your comments have been asking me. And uh, just really want to thank you for spending some time with us today. I know these things can get lengthy, but really our whole goal is to just make sure we've informed you. And uh, if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. Again, it's, it, it's what keeps us going. We're a very small company. There's just uh, me, my son, Ben, um, Steve, and Marty. Uh, we got Mike there, and we've got a good shop. And, and, every cell and every view means something to us and I want you to know that from the heart. So thanks again and I hope to see you out on the road.